In this video, I'm going to explain how to get social proof to build your business fast. How people buy has changed forever since Amazon created online reviews. During the video, I reveal some startling facts about social proof and give social proof examples that have transformed the businesses which use them. This video about getting social proof is taken from one of our live masterclasses with a group of our business mentors who each paid £7,500 to attend. So hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you're excited to dive into the video and we'll get started straight after this. So social proof is number five. So social proof is all about giving evidence of what? That what you say happens. Yes, yeah, that we can deliver on our promises. Now, I've been talking about social proof. So social proof is, as we say, evidence. So it's things like testimonials, case studies, that sort of stuff. Now, I've been talking about this for 20 odd years, right? And most small and medium-sized business owners aren't that bothered about it. They think, yeah, it's not that important. Things have happened, though, in the last five years, in particular, that have, again, changed the face of social proof forever. What, do you know what that is? Trustpilot. Trustpilot. So Rating. reviews, ratings. So Amazon were the first to bring reviews in. I mean, they were the first to bring a lot of stuff in. <clears throat> But think about it now. The reviews have become a massively important part of how people buy. So social proof, whilst it's always been important, is even more important now, isn't it? Because it, it, it's how people buy stuff. Now I'm gonna give you some really interesting stats on this that are staggering in terms of how important this stuff is. Um, the most important thing to recognize that if you don't have proof in your marketing, people will not believe you. Put your hand up if you're a skeptic. All of us are skeptics. I, I defy, if there's a thousand people in this room, I think every hand is going up. We're all skeptics. Obviously, some of us are on different levels of skepticism, but we are all skeptics. Why are we skeptics? Because Absolute experience, because we've all been burnt, or we've heard of a friend or a family member being burnt, <laughs> figuratively speaking. So, if you don't put proof in your marketing, what do you think happens? People go elsewhere. Yeah, less people buy, because th th there's nothing. It's no good. Exactly. Like, it's, it's like obvious, isn't it? Exactly that. So, so when we look at all the marketing tomorrow, you're still going to be staggered by the lack of testimonials in, in the ads that we're looking at. I mean, there will be some, but most of them will not include them. It's like, this is like agencies are clueless. It's just so important. The hardest <laughs> thing we have to do is to prove that we can deliver on our promise. It's the hardest thing, isn't it? Yet if we give testimonials and case studies, guess what happens? It doesn't mean to say we get rid of skepticism. It means people are more likely to buy because we've given them evidence and proof that we do deliver on our promises. So look, anyone recognize that? TripAdvisor. Yeah, TripAdvisor. So one of, again, one of the pioneers, not pioneers, but one of the, at the forefront now of, of, of reviews. So that's, that's a review of a hotel, I guess. Um, yeah, and you know, obviously tells us this looks pretty decent, doesn't it? So excellent, you know, but you know, there's a few dodgy ones. So look, you know, what, what do we do before booking a hotel or restaurant? If you've never been before, I mean, I never thought I would do that, but I do, I do it. I mean, it's taken me a while to, to move with the, with the times and with everyone else, but I, I do it now. You know, holiday, booking a holiday, you go into a hotel you've never been to before. Everybody looks now, don't they? Yeah. Everybody. Oh, here. So th this is Yelp, so this, this, it, it's growing. Okay, it's not that big in the UK, but 
the reason I'm showing you this is it's showing you that it's crossing over, the reviews is crossing over, not just from your hotels, you, you know, your Amazons and your restaurants. It's moving into every type of business now. So this is, this is one, Best Electronics. Um, so it's got reviews for Maplin and Gigabyte Electronics, whoever they are. Okay, so it's, it's transcending now into, into virtually every other business category. So what effect does a bad or several bad reviews have on your decision-making process? <coughs> what do you do? If, if there are a number of bad reviews, obviously most of us are intelligent people, so we take a pragmatic view, don't we? If there's the odd bad review, we kind of... But if there's a lot of bad reviews, what effect does that have on our purchasing decision? Yeah. You do. Conversely, if the, if the majority are good, what do we do? We book. We all know, because we're intelligent people, that no business is perfect. But we look at the trend, don't we? We look at... You know, if the majority of the reviews are bad, we're not going, are we? Now, listen to this. So these are stats, okay, that um, I find fascinating. So 97% of consumers looked online for local businesses last year. That's massive, that. You know, 10, 15 years ago, obviously you had things like the Yellow Pages and, and, and other media. <coughs> now most people are looking online. 85% of consumers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. That's massive. That really shocked me, that. Positive reviews make 73% of consumers trust a local business more. I think that's logical. 49% yeah? of consumers need at least a four-star rating before they choose to use a business. Consumers read an average of seven reviews before trusting a business, up from six last year. So we're, we're consuming more reviews in our decision-making process. And online reviews have been shown to impact 67.7% of purchasing decisions. I don't think that's a surprise to any of us. In fact, you know, I thought it'd be more, but it's still high, isn't it? So what we've got to do is we've got to use the fact that people's purchasing decisions have changed forever but what we've got to do is we've got to add social proof and, and what we call credibility builders. So credibility, any idea what credibility builders? I've mentioned a couple already, but what have we got? So we've got testimonials, screenshots of reviews. So what I'm talking about here is us using this stuff in our marketing. Okay, so we're not, we're not just talking about the reviews, but we're, so we can use screenshot of reviews, can't we? Because a, a review is verifiable, isn't it? So why don't we use screenshots in our marketing? Case studies work really well. So a case study is basically a, a story, if you like, of how the client has helped a particular client, customer or patient. And obviously it's written like a story. Of, and you know, It talks about the problem and the challenges, what was done to, to, to overcome those and what the result was. Yeah. You use photographs. I mean, some companies do use photographs, don't they? Yeah, photographs are great. I mean, the more evidence you get, you know, if you've got the, whoever the customer was in that case study, use customer t video, video testimonials. Before and afters work brilliantly. Um, membership of associations, interestingly, work well. Because people assume if you're a member of an association, you, you must have credibility. Industry awards as well. You know, if you've run, won an award, that's a credibility builder, isn't it? So if we can use as much of this as possible, it's going to add more and more credibility to our organisation, which means people are going to trust us more that we can deliver on our promises. And if we do that, sales do that. So let's just talk about testimonials <coughs> for a second. Let's go back. How, how do you think you get testimonials? Ask. 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 Okay, that's what most people say. Ask for them. So I created some time ago something called the testimonials by the dozen letter. Okay. And obviously the delegates get this as part of their pack. I mean, this thing works like crazy. I mean, it's, it's one of the most successful letters I've ever written. And it's about three paragraphs. All the client has to do is literally... Print this letter on the letterhead, make a few small changes, 
send it out. Clients then send it back. They turn it over, handwrite the testimonial, send it back. You've got amazing testimonials. And they are amazing testimonials. The stuff that people send back is incredible. So you know, yesterday we talked about, and I think Ellie said, look, how, how, how do we make sure that we, we get the longevity and the relationship with the client? And I said, well, look, one of the first things we do that's great is we get results as early as possible. So actually one of the first things we, we tell our clients to do is send the testimonial by a dozen letter out. Because they're gonna get a load of great testimonials back. Proves what we do works. But also think about what, what we've done. We've, we, We've added a massive amount of social proof that we can now use or they can use in their marketing. We've made the business owners feel really good about themselves because there's nothing better than getting a testimonial from a satisfied customer, is there? And then what we tell them to do is, right, make sure all, you, all the staff see it. What do you think the staff start thinking? They feel really good about what they're doing, yeah. So this is a huge thing. And I say there's no excuse. You can get it from anyone. The, re the example I'm going to give you here is, so, uh, a firm of um, personal injury lawyers, okay? Large firm of personal injury lawyers, five partner firm, been around for decades, got thousands of clients, personal injury uh, clients, not one customer testimonial in their marketing. Now, every now and then they'd get letters of thanks and stuff, but they just shoved them in the drawer and didn't do anything with them. So they sent the testimonial by the dozen letter. Reluctantly, I might add, because they're like, hang on, we're, we're lawyers and, um, there's no way our clients will divulge information like this and how much compensation that we've got for them. I said, look, just, just send it out. Anyway, so they sent it out and they got hundreds back. So this is, this is the letter that the clients would send out. So it's obviously uh, addressed to the customer here and it's just, it's mail merged. Okay, so I have a favor to ask of you. I'm in the process of putting together a list of testimonials, a collection of comments about our services or products. That would be a change from satisfied clients like yourself. Would you take a few minutes to give me your opinion of our services? No need to dictate a letter. Just jot your comments on the back of this letter, sign it, and then return to us in the envelope provided. I look forward to learning what you like about our services, but I also welcome any suggestions or criticisms. Many thanks. And signed by the client. And then just under that, it says, <coughs> I give you permission to use my comments in your marketing and they, they sign it, turn it over and handwrite the testimonial. And this is the sort of stuff that comes back. You can't buy this stuff. So you can't make this up either. So this is this, a lawyer called Mrs. Slow. Anyway, Mrs. Slow was very understanding and helpful. She always made time to talk to me and return my many calls. Nothing was too much trouble. The home visits were especially helpful and she worked hard to get the best results for us. Now imagine the difference, so that's a customer testimonial, okay? Imagine if the business was saying these things. So if the business themselves, which they do, most businesses do, were saying, look, we're very understanding and helpful with our customers. We always make time to talk to customers and return your calls. Nothing's ever too much trouble, and we do home visits. You're gonna take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, aren't you? But because a client is saying it, I'm much more likely to believe it. Will you use a handwritten testimonial? Yeah, what? That's what makes it really Yes, it's, it's authentic, isn't it? What do you think is better than a handwritten testimonial? Video speech. Video, yeah, it's one of the reasons why Simon comes to a lot of our stuff. So video testimonials are very, 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 very powerful. They have to be done properly. They do, which is where Simon comes in. Yeah, I was talking to Simon last night, yeah, video. Yeah. yeah, it's really important, that. And there is a skill to it, isn't there? It's descriptive. You can't script them, you can't script them. So look at this one then. She tried remarkably hard to increase my claim without my request or pressure and managed to convince the insurers to pay an extra 2,600 pounds on top of my 4,000 pound claim. None of our clients will tell anybody what, what their compensation was. <laughs> now, just think of that. So they've gone from no social proof to a mass amount of proof that they deliver on their promise. The, the change in result is that. So the ideal would be handwritten, photo, name underneath, if it's the business name as well, perfect. But video testimonials bear. But we can't always get video testimonials. So case studies, we talked about case studies, which is basically a story 
based on how the, how the clients helped a particular client, customer or patient. As I said, included testimonial or video testimonial. They're just really, really powerful. So he, he's, a, he's a good example. So Luminaires, they're, they're basically a lighting, professional lighting company. And this is something that they, they said about a case study that they sent. So one strategy involved producing a case study of a recently completed project. And rather than emailing the details to 20 people, we created a list of 10 targeted dream clients and produced an A2 board and had it delivered to them. The result was 100% effective with two meetings already taken place and one presentation is due next week. Receiving four written replies of thanks and three telephone calls of thanks. I've never experienced results like this before. Typically, 100% response, that's not typical. Okay, that, that, that's hardly ever happened. Okay, but it's just a good example of the power of case studies. And this is what it looked like. So this was on an A2 board. Okay, and what, what, what Ralph's doing is showing one of the buildings that he's done the lighting for, that his company's done the lighting for. With, with, the, with the case study here. And it looks impressive, but the difference that makes to, the, to his results compared to anything else was all because of the case study. Because you can, you can show what you're doing, and you know, as, as Dave said earlier, um, if you can do the before and after, even better. You know, if, if he'd have done before and after on that, actually, I think he did there, look. Yeah, yeah, the before and after. Yeah. yeah, so brilliant. So social proof then. So you basically add as many credibility builders to your sales and marketing as possible. And of course, communicator. That's simple. Social proof is massive now. Look, it's always been massive, as I said right at the start of this segment. But it's even more important now because we have changed the way we buy because of reviews. So we're even more tuned in to, to this sort of stuff. So the more our clients do it, the more successful they're going to be. How much does it cost to put social proof in place? Not a lot. Not a lot. Cost of a stamp. As you can see, the way people buy now and how they use online reviews and social proof has changed forever. It's absolutely imperative you get as much positive social proof as you can to increase your sales and profits. And if you want to use this to build a mentoring business and be part of one of the world's fastest growing industries, unlock your skills, experience and expertise and use it to build a successful and world class mentoring business, you've got to register for my free masterclass training. You can check it out at the link below this video. It's called businessmentoringsystem.com and make sure you register now to grab your seat. During the masterclass I show you how to quickly acquire a steady stream of 400 pounds, dollars or euros an hour mentoring clients. And if you like this video and you found it helpful, please share it with your friends and colleagues, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell because I post one new video on building a successful mentoring business every week. Also, in the comments section below, let me know what your big takeaway was. And if you have a request for a video, please let me know. And finally, remember, growing your mentoring business isn't rocket science, but it is a science. I'll see you again next time.